Facebook, Airbnb, Hotmail, Mailbox, Zynga, Groupon, Dropbox, Twitter. These companies became successful without press releases, without PR firms, without Madison Avenue, without billboards in Times Square. Really, they, they became successful without any traditional marketing whatsoever. And so, if you're a marketer, if you work at an agency, if you're a technology founder, um, if, if you're involved in, in growing companies, this should, this should be a wake-up call because here are people who have become massively successful doing so with none of the techniques or tactics that we pride ourselves at being really good at. And that, that's why it caught my attention. And so, um, obviously, it wasn't luck that took these companies from tiny startups to massive success. It's growth hacking, right? And so I decided to, to figure out what growth hacking was, what it meant before it sort of swallowed me and my, my job. The best definition that I could come up with is um, a growth hacker is someone who throws out the playbook of traditional marketing and they replace it with a new set of tools, tools that have only been recently invented. Um, they're essentially rebuilding marketing from the ground up because so many of the, the tactics and strategies that your typical marketer takes for granted are, are out of reach for them. And while marketers can get away with sort of doing marketing, these sort of vague notions of branding or mind share, a growth hacker can only do one thing, and that's to grow. Um, that's the only thing they're measured on. When Facebook makes a decision early on to have a growth department instead of a marketing department, they're making a very significant decision. They're, they're saying, we don't care what marketing is, we just care whether you're growing the service or not. And that's the one metric you're going to be judged on. And typically, this, this makes more sense for a startup because a startup isn't trying to become 1% bigger or 10% or bigger the way that an established company or a Fortune 500 company would. Instead, they're having to go from nothing to something. They have to get their first 1,000 users, then their first 100,000 users, then their first million users, and so forth. So um, the, the definition that I'm going to give you as a growth hacker, the formula we're going to go through is, is based on these four steps. And it's essentially surmised with the idea that Anything that gets and keeps customers is marketing, and that begins with product market fit, it goes into hacking growth, then viral elements are added in, and then finally, that loop is closed with retention and optimization. So, let's get into it. Uh, first step, right, the, the single worst decision that a marketer can make is to start with a product that nobody actually wants. Um, but sadly, this is where we have to start as marketers quite often, because they say here, like, you make this popular, and as a marketer, sometimes you have to say, like, look, I don't think that that is possible. I think there's a fundamental flaw here. Um, and a growth hacker in a smaller company has the, has the freedom to do this, or, or perhaps they're also involved in the making of the product itself. And so if we flip that on its head, the single best marketing decision you make is to have a really amazing product. 